Danny in Indiana. <laughs> hey, it's Jamie. Hey, right, Jamie. All right, whatever. Yeah, you know. But anyways, I was in high school, played high school baseball. I was one for 11 my entire career. Got a hit on senior night. Home run. You fucker. What? Was that Joy, supposed to be a terrible story? Was that him, like, trying to no, he was just relive bragging. the moment? Yeah, he was just bragging. Wow. That's all. Is there any high school moment? that? Because I know I, I've been at local bars where you walk in and you see that guy that was on the football team in high school, and uh. he, he still wears the jacket. And, uh. and like, the, that was the... it anymore. <laughs> yeah, just a mess. Or you see him, there was one guy, and... Uh, he he was the big like the big jock in in uh, high school, and I was pulling my truck into a car wash, and he was taking my ticket, and saying, "What do you want?" I'm like, "Oh, I'll have the Supreme," oh, you know. Wow. And I looked at him, and I was like, "That's the guy! Holy shit! He's the guy that was the guy was in, the guy high, in school. high school." And oh, he yeah. wasn't even like it wasn't the even Brad, like the he Brad owns Pitt the place. Of your high school. Yeah, yeah. He's like fucking famous. Yeah. Famous in high school. Yeah, that was it. He had a Division three school that was looking at him. Oh, like, <laughs> dude. And he bragged about it to yeah, everybody. Couldn't compete at that guy. level. <laughs> we used to look, and we used to look at the... Uh, Fucked was, up my shoulder. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's what happened. Blew <laughs> out a knee. The, uh, the cheerleaders were all over this guy, and we used to look at the cheerleaders like it was a crime. Like we were peeping toms that could be arrested for looking at them. That's how... Like low on the totem pole, me and my friends were. Oh, we yeah. were the we were the pot smoking army jacket guys. Like oh. no matter every day, it was the same thing: jeans, a t-shirt, and an army jacket. And we just oh. kind of like messed up hair, walking around stoned all the time. The burnouts. The we burnouts. Were part of a group. I was in that fucking just generic drones like it, you weren't popular but you weren't like a total fucking nerd you weren't a burnout yeah you were just that fucking just levi's in a flannel you just blend in you're blend like in. background guy you're like the audience member to cheer on at the football game <laughs> that's, that's all you were just like background i was an extra in high school that's but you could probably like like i knew i could i had some crossover potential because i was funny and that yeah. kind of works that goes a long way especially in high school uh, but, no, I was part of the burnout crew, and this guy was like, you know, the, all the cheerleaders. And we used to, me and Joe Curry and stuff used to, like, peek around the corner and watch cheerleader practice. And we were just in love with these girls. And this guy's just, yeah, whatever, bitch, you know. Yeah, I'll see you later. Fuck oh, you. And, and there I was. I pull up. They're and all following him like fucking little ducks following yeah, them on the road. Exactly. <laughs> That's all cute. But. And he takes my little ticket. At the car wash, and it wasn't even like he was the guy that owns. Because if he owned the car wash, that would still be okay. All right, you're the owner. You're just, you know, putting in some sweat equity today. <laughs> no, he was just the guy that kind of, all right, give him the number three. Like, Oof, the mighty have fallen. <laughs> and I wonder, because I didn't say anything, but I wonder if he even recognized me because I was such a non-entity to those people. You know, like oh, why oh, are yeah. you the burnout guy? They you know, don't recognize no, they don't remember. people like you. No. They don't remember. They don't it was about you. them, the rest of the team, and the cheerleaders. And the cheerleaders. Right. Mm. Uh, let's go to uh, Matt in Florida. Matt. Hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. I just wanted to comment about the whole equality thing. You know, uh, you mentioned the Chinese earlier. They have it. They call it communism. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's if you think principle. we're going to let the goddamn commies, I get your point, sir. All right, see you. Communism all right. is all equal. Let's go to Tim in uh, Long Beach. Tim? Post it, Um, Hey, guys. I love the show. Bill, you're great. Um, I just want to say the reason this is the uh, the dweebs, their, their uh, prophecy is coming true, that you make fun of us now, one day you're going to be working for us. You know, the guys who uh, will take less, they're the guys now who are the teachers and the coaches, you know? Yeah, that's, I believe, yeah. that's so know, true. Um, like, yeah, but also, uh, just as long as I'm on the line, I'm a, I, uh, I'm uh, an inspiring uh, radio host. If I can get a quick plug-in for my uh, my podcast, which I speak to six people on. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, thanks. We do, um, we're just on uh, iTunes with Inappropriate Guys, if you want to get it. I like him. Um, He's got like a uh, Mike, uh, Mike uh, and a Mad Dog uh, delivery. 
Yeah, you know, it's nice. I'm sitting in my basement, you know, with my you know, my mom's basement talking about six six of my friends. Ma <laughs> Everyone's got <laughs> I'm doing a <this> show. <laughs> now, now we gotta trash this dream. You're never gonna make it, kid. No. Yeah, exactly, yeah. No, I... as as it's hard to get through to you guys. As long as I've gotten through, I wanted to just get a quick plug in so then there'll be a whole thing on whack back tonight, I'm sure, saying how much I stink and rip you guys off. Ma please stop calling me. I'm trying oh, to do my radio time. show. Mom! Mom! <laughs> I'm not the Lord. I have to do this now. I see the awful, terrible things in my life and turn it into something funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrific. That's terrific. There's podcast in the basement. Do you have a do you have cardboard cutouts of celebrities and a set? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a little Photoshop picture of me with you guys. It's, you know, I'll, yeah. Uh, yeah, we're all just no. pals, hanging out, doing our radio show together. Put your hand around the back of our cardboard head and tap our head. That's really funny. <laughs> all right, well, good luck to you, Tim. Thanks a lot, guys. A lot of people right. doing the podcast now. There are a few celebrities now popping up because of this. A little we, podcast we got to start playing some of the podcasts. Yeah. Uh, what, what exactly is that for the technical lead? What challenge? you do is you get a camera. The video camera, because it's all video podcasts now. The audio podcasts are a thing of the past. Yeah, that's that's nothing. So uh, you get a video camera, you get a room, and you get a buddy and some alcohol or something. I don't know. You could do anything. And you just right. tape it, uh, you whatever it content it is. Then you put it up on the internet in uh, downloadable form for the iPods. So then people can then listen and watch you on their iPod after they download it, and they download a little show. Some of them are just five minutes. I know there's uh, one show. Is this guy? He's got a whole, like volumes of five-minute little helpers for Photoshop. So if you're into doing Photoshop, he gives you little pointers and tips on uh, using the Photoshop program. And then there was one I watched the other day. It was kind of funny. It was these two guys that do tech talk with laptops on their lap on a couch in someone's house. But they drink during the whole thing. So as it's going on, oh, yeah, they're getting more drunk and more drunk. And that was kind of funny. And there's just, I mean, thousands of these things out there. Most of them just suck. It's something you wouldn't right? even want to look out for 10 minutes. But, but occasionally, you get, you get a gem. You get something funny. Well, there's a business there. Someone to yeah. go through all the podcasts and really just get the better ones mm -hmm. and throw them up on a site. Steve. Mark in South Carolina, what's yes. up? Hey, what's up, fellas? Hey. Hey, I'm a teacher, and uh, this goes to show why we're last in the country, but if a kid fails a test or homework or whatnot, we've got to give them repeated chances to make it up or to pass. And basically, we're not allowed to give them anything less than a low D on the report card. So no, no more fails? Ass? Say again? No one fails? It's just low Ds? Pretty much. If we fail and then we have to deal with the parents and go through all this red tape, and it's like, why, why fail them and have to it deal used with all to that? Be, Mr. and Mrs. You Johnson, fail, your son is dumb. Is an idiot. And if you failed, nowadays, and I could just see parents like this these days. You, when you you fail your child, when your child fails, you run to the school and try to get an excuse as to why the teacher is such an idiot to have failed your child. Instead of doing what the uh, old school parents did, the palm of the hand to the back of your head. Oh, yeah. What are you, a fucking idiot? My, my baseball career ended because of a D in math in a fifth grade. A D in math? And that was, and that it. was it. Pulled off the team. Like, that's it. Get your shit together. Yeah. Get your fact, grades you know up. Funny? Well, no, my dad had cool. this one for all and all for one, so he took all the kids off the baseball team, so all my brothers hated me. And my older brother's team. <laughs> That's the Marine fucking yeah, rules, my man. My older brother's team won the World Series that year, and he still brings this shit up. Fucking wow. Fucking douchebag. Getting a fucking D, D in fifth grade math. Your brother Bill is not performing up to the standards of this family. What is that in your locker? You will all suffer for not supporting him like you should have. I need it, pile. They're paying for it. <laughs> <laughs> Did they come into your room and beat you with soap? Dude, fuck my brother. Socks? All right? I'm going to tell you why. Because he flunked the third grade and had to stay back. And because he the had whole to third grade? He, the whole fucking grade. He flunked it. How do you flunk third grade? Wow, well, that is tough. This is the best thing. That's like advanced finger painting, isn't it? <laughs> he, he flunks the thing, and because he flunks it and he has to stay back, all of us have to stay back. What are you no, talking about? Stop. I swear to God, I had to repeat the first grade, and I got, like, B's in it. Why would Wait, you, that what? sounds illegal. I am in a world of shit. That sounds illegal. Wait you can't hold back private. Hey, this is the early 70s, sir. Or what, 1974? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. 
Yeah, wrap your head around the Your concept. brother failed third grade, so you had to suffer? <laughs> Look at the eyes. He's doing the, <laughs> the full metal jacket eyes. <laughs> Open your mouth. They're paying for it. You eat it. A fully loaded full metal jacket. Don't pull my fucking hand over there. I said choke yourself. They... Wait a minute. How could a school... It was your parents that said no. they made the call. It was your dad. It was your dad that said... Since he failed or he got left back, they're all called up back. and he said, "I want to hold all these kids back. I think it's better for." And them. the school said, <laughs> oh "Okay." God. Yeah. I would, wow. I would hate my brother. Wow. Yeah, and he's bitching because he didn't get some fucking trophy on some team he probably sucked on anyways. Wait a minute, he failed third, third grade. So you had to do first grade all over again. Yeah. That doesn't make sense. You weren't even in third grade. You were in first. I grade. I was in first grade. He was in third grade. He flunks the third grade. <laughs> So he has to repeat it. So I had to repeat it. Oh, it's the worst. We go down to the bus stop. Now we're like the moron family. Uh, the whole family, right? Yeah. Oh, it was awful. Oh, here's that left logic? back family. Yeah, what was his logic? Uh, you know, you stick together, one for all. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't Holy know what his shit. logic was. I think he was more like he saw my brother fucking up and felt that we were all going to go down that road. So maybe if we were you know, four feet tall in the first grade, that that would give us the confidence to learn our ABCs. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what to what do. What a was. horrid thing to do. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. You want to talk about being bored shitless? It's one of the first jokes oh. in my act because you learn how to read Yeah. In, in the first grade, and I'm literally just sitting there as these kids are fucking sounding. Like, I'm reading the... You know, Bing and Sandy, Sandy and Bing. And then he'd yeah. be like, and I'm just sitting there going, like, oh my God. Yeah, the early grades are like, if you get through them, oh, you're, you're light through. years. You're light years yeah. beyond anybody in kindergarten. They're, they're like writing their name. They're like the dotted I, with, which has like a big circle <laughs> that, that they can't even make meat. You know what I mean? It's like this squiggly fucking line. <laughs> they're fresh out of crayons. I'm like reading at this point. Yeah. Bored shitless. That is the weirdest thing. Oh, it was awful. Shapes and colors. Let's, Wonderful. Let's go to Eddie on Long Island. He went to high school with Anthony. Eddie. Hey, how you doing? All hey, man. right. Yeah, I remember Anthony in high school with the green army coat. What, uh, where did you go? Uh, John Glenn, 1980. And Congrats you remember me. me? Oh, I remember you clearly, because I used to, I was friends with Joe Curry and Frank Bush. What's your last name? Guys. Oh, yeah, okay. I, I remember your name popping up. Big, tall guy, blonde hair. I used to play football. I was kind of like half burnout, half sports guy. Yeah, there were the, there were those guys, too, the crossover sports guy burnouts. <laughs> <laughs> the guys forced into athletics by their dad. Yeah, but just yeah, wanted to hang out and the, smoke pot. Yeah, it was pretty crazy those days. All I remember, was, all I remember clearly was uh, you guys hanging on that back door. Yeah, we always used to hang out. At the always hearing your voice. I forgot you guys mark something, but you used to see old bombers. <laughs> no, we used that? to smoke. We used to smoke joints at the back door. Yeah, because that was kind of the the place where you would go. That was kind of safe, almost. Yeah, around the boat. Not so much that. We used to go on our cars, right? Yeah, and once we were old enough and all had cars, you'd just go out to the pizza place and smoke. But there was one time I was smoking Popping a joint. A track. I was smoking a joint out back, and uh, it was by the gymnasium doors. And Coach Cirillo came out. And um, and he goes, what are you doing? And I just took a big, massive hit. And I just went like, nothing, trying to, like, hold it in. And he goes, nothing, huh? Takes his big, meaty finger and stabs it into my gut. And I just went, right and <laughs> exhaled this big cloud of pot smoke into his face. <laughs> Boof, down to the office. I was constantly in what trouble. What was his name? Cirillo. You just can't yeah. make up names like this. Just like no, nah, he was script, and you just can't come up. This with guy the thought he was military. He'd you'd walk in, toes on the line, count off, you know, That's one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, uh, seven. Know. What are you doing? You're not counting off. It's one, two, three. Four. What? It's gym class, you idiot. Yeah. As a coach, he was totally militaristic. As a as a gym teacher, I just. I really didn't get in the gym too much because I was, he always threw us in the weight room when you were He was constant. You know what he would do? He would throw out a bunch of balls and <laughs> get put people on the weights and then open up the accordion door and talk to the fucking girls on the other right. side hey, of the door. Or sleep. That's all Jim Coach. Uh, yeah, go to the desk and sleep. Without exception, all better guys. Hey, Eddie. We had a, we had a gym coach. They all had like that, that finger point, too. We had a gym co coach who's like, 
Yeah, he had a trial with the Nets, but he blew out his knee. Yep. Well, and that's Mike, the only reason he's here. We're lucky to have him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, are we? We had one of those. Guy L- was Lilienthal. a nightmare. He was so fucking bitter because he was thinking about the blown out knee every day of his life. We had Gil Lilienthal, who was uh, a guy who uh, was supposed to have played with the Broncos and blew right. out his knee, and he ends up teaching gym. <laughs> right. And this guy, if he caught you smoking, you got a choice. He would report you or one punch. You'd go into his office and he would punch you oh, once. Oh, you know he's hoping you're taking the punch. Oh, the people that took the punch were like legends. They were legendary. Right, like you right. took the fucking punch and you would he would fuck you up. You would you would be bruised and, and we, we had this we had this gym coach, uh, Mr. Cafaso, and he had that. I swear to God, his finger was made out of iron. And you you were like in fifth grade and you'd fuck up jumping jacks and he'd come over yeah. and he's he'd be jabbing you you'd see it coming through the back of the dude's shirt in front of you <laughs> <as he's sitting laughs> jamming it through your little rib cage. Hey Eddie. Yeah. What do you do these days? Um, telecommunications. I uh, started doing phone systems back when I graduated. Yeah. And I've been doing it ever since. I've been like a loyal fan of you guys from like day one, even early. Opie and Anthony on BAB being a homegrown boy here. Dude, wow. I dude, I did I did shit in high school and look where I am now. Yeah, thank you. I've done really, really well. But the, All bottom, right. li- the bottom line is, is just those those memories will always be those memories, you know? Yeah, that's true. All right, Eddie. One of, these, one of these days, I'd love to hook up with all those guys again, even especially Joe. I haven't seen Joe since the day I left the school. Joe Curry, he's doing yeah. good. He's doing stand-up. He's out on Long Island doing stand-up. Uh, Frank Bush moved down uh, south. He's a fucking hillbilly. Yeah. And uh, it's about all I keep tabs on these days. Everybody else, I don't know. I see him at the car wash occasionally. <laughs> we got Cowbell Bill checking in. Well, Bill. Hey, what's up, guys? Hi, Bill. <laughs> what's up, brother? Not much, right. man. Yeah. And do you yeah. remember when Lilienthal purchased that bar on Lockfield Road? Yep. <laughs> yeah, the gym teacher that bought a bar. Bought yeah. a bar out on Lockfield Road, and we always used to end up going down there drinking. Well, drinking, we played there, but... The, the deal was that Joe and I and Alex, we cut out a gym, like 11th and 12th grade. And the deal was whoever had to make it up had to go twice a day, and one of those times they had to run around the track for the whole 45 minutes. Yep. Or you weren't going to graduate. <laughs> I was that guy. You know, he opens up this bar and says, you got a band? You're playing at my bar. <laughs> <laughs> gym teacher. Right? So we used to play from like 8 o'clock at night to like 4.30 in the morning. This guy's throwing ice at us, totally <laughs> degrading us, but he, we passed. It was got- during school. Imagine the controversy that would happen. Like, this guy would be arrested. It's it's uh, uh, students being used as labor in his bar to pass his class. <laughs> yeah, he, he paid us like nothing. You know, I think, and you were a roadie then. Yep. Yeah, you know, I would give Anthony like, you know, $6. Yeah, my, to move oh, some, of, some of the shit that they could get away with. I think I told this story before. I had a guy, uh, he was like the, the, the uh, like a history teacher slash football coach, the trainer, mm-hmm. and I pissed him off, and it was during football season, so he didn't have time to detain me. So he took me down to the gym and locked me in his office, just locked the door with the lights out. That couldn't happen. <laughs> and it's just, yeah, it's like, it was so before, like, everybody was lawsuit crazy. I could have yeah. owned that guy, just like, dude, what, oh, if, yeah. what, what if there was a fire? Yeah, I'd be dead. I want A's for the rest of the year, and I'm not showing up. And I didn't know, and I just fucking just took the humiliation. Yeah, take the humiliation. (laughs) Oh, this this guy guy used to torture the kids. He used to make us hold down this kid. Uh, He looked like Eddie Munster. I forget his name. (laughs) But he would draw a bullseye on his face and then take the magic marker and wing it at his face. (laughs) (laughs) That's it's funny. You know what's funny? On. He's like, I don't remember his name. I bet that kid remembers all of your names. He probably yeah. has them written on his Every bedroom wall. Every single one of them. He's cleaning oh. that gun scope. Lilienthal finally got fired over that, uh, I think he hit Tommy Slater over the head with a pipe. Well, he, he had him in a headlock, and he had one of those uh, bars for the, small, for the small dumbbell. Right, it was yeah. a small dumbbell uh, bar. Right, and he just, like, he used to give me noogies if he called me smoking in the bathroom. <laughs> but he just noogies. took the pipe, and he lightly tapped the kid on the head, and it cracked his skull. Yeah, lightly tapped from <laughs> Lilienthal. The guy's arms are like friggin' holiday hams. Yeah, he probably knew exactly where to hit him. Yeah, tapped skull. his uh, head with one of those things, broke his, uh, cracked his skull. <laughs> like a hard-boiled egg. Yeah, a little, yeah, a little <laughs> dink. And that was the last we saw of Gil Lilienthal. <laughs> Even back then, that was over the line. Oops. There, right. there, were, these, there were these two black guys, Otto and Stephen Cradle, 
All right, and for some reason he just didn't like him. Yeah, oh, gee, yeah, 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 right? <laughs> fill in the blank. Right, but he he used to get these guys in full Nelsons and like squeeze until their shoulder blades are ready to pop out of the skin, <laughs> and then take them and throw them over the lockers in the gym locker room. The guy was a brutal, sadistic son of a bitch, and he was working for the school system in Elwood. Yeah, unbelievable, Bill. Uh, Thanks for the memories, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's plenty more where that came from, brother. I'll, I'll set up another poker game. You got it, man. Let's do it. I did. I'll take your money. Uh, yeah, like the last time, you bastard. <laughs> Later, man. Yeah. All right, Bill. There you go. Cowbell Bill, everyone. Cowbell Bill. Let's go to yeah, Debo in Arizona. Shit, Debo. Hey, what's up, boys? Hey. You're killing it this morning. Jesus, I'm pissing myself driving. I've got to be honest with you, though, these kids' sports, I'm telling you, we got, uh, I'm a little league coach, right? And we got kids on the team, they're only allowed to play one position for two innings. Then you got to take them out. So you got the best pitcher in the league. He goes up there, throws 18 pitches, strikes out six kids, and you got to bench him. Yeah, that's because the, he's doing too good. And that's the problem. There's two generations happening here. The kids don't understand because that's just what they know. But the adults that are watching these games, like, oh my god, I wish this, you know this kid was pitching for my team when I was yeah, a, when good. I was a how, kid. How parents can't kid? deal with the fact that your kid sucks at you know a particular. I mean, that's just showing he has to go find what he's good at. Yeah, go find something else. How do you get a kid fired up about anything when they start to excel and you go, okay, that's it, you're done. Thanks for your contribution. Right. That's what you got to do. You got to see what they're good at, and the only way to do that is to let them pit be them their best one and pit them against one another, so they have a base to to look at. This Absolutely. guy sucks. This guy's great. And if you fall somewhere in between, you're you know mediocre. Yeah. But if some kid is great, then you know he should pursue this. You don't want to give this kid false dreams if he sucks. Yeah. And and, and then it kills that you're moment. You're treating him just like the guy that is great. And then it kills that moment in his life when he finally finds, like, shit, I'm actually good at something. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 He, got bled, he got it bled out of him when he was nine. <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Debo, thank you. Let's, uh, let's see. Where are we going Matt. here? Let's, uh, let's try Mike in D.C. Sorry about that, Matt. Mike, D.C., what's up? What's up, boys? Hey. I had the worst fucking gym teacher in elementary school. Kickball. Every day, she was a drunk. All she wanted to do was sit under a tree and sleep it off. <laughs> <laughs> she was outside unless it got below freezing because she didn't want to hear our voices inside echoing off the walls. And she could hide from the other teachers that would bust her she for being uh, hung over. Skin like leather from sleeping under trees. Yeah. If you're Not playing kickball. You know what bit? We are great kickball Oof. players, though. Know what bit we have to bring back? Your mm. bit. Uh, we got to get a gym teacher whistle. All right. I forgot about that. I used to do the. I was telling Lindsay bit. about that bit the other day. Do we have a whistle? Hell, we don't have one. Yeah, there might be one laying around here somewhere. I'm not putting my mouth on it. I need it sterilized. Oh, there it is. Yeah, it is my whistle. Anyone put their ass on this? Who Doesn't knows? Smell like ass. Than? Oh, that's <laughs> fine then. Broke back whistle. <laughs> <laughs> It's a lousy whistle. It's, Need one of the metal ones. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Anthony used to do this bit, the Dyke uh, gym teacher. Uh, <laughs> it's fucking I don't even remember yeah, it. We had yeah, that. you do. You, you made the girls do all sorts of crazy stuff that showed off their <laughs> young <laughs> young teenage bodies. Because <laughs> you were the lesbian teacher, and none of the girls in class knew that you were a lesbian teacher. So you got away with murder. <laughs> <laughs> all right, girls, we're going to do handstands today. <laughs> Just get up against the wall, uh, get up on your hands, and um, no, we got we, those shorts added added extra weight uh, that makes it more difficult to uh, lift your legs up. So uh, no shorts today. We're doing them in our panties. <laughs> up against the walls, girls. Every female gym teacher, doik. And just got yeah. away, got away with murder because no yeah. one knew. Oh, let's the put the dike know. in a room. Where with young teenage, teenage girls are nude. <laughs> that has got to be the best job for a dyke ever. She's living in the worst apartment because she makes 14000 a year, but she doesn't give a shit. Cares. Cares. But I'm in a hell. room every day. Still has, I see nude young teen right. girls. No cable. No, has to use dial-up still, but who cares? Every day is a treat. <laughs> That's got to be the most heavenly sight. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. That's just a great thought. I was just thinking you go home that. to a cat and Ms. A, Ms. And a can of soup. <laughs> Ms. Johnson? Yes? I, I'm having a problem um, down here. Look, hair is growing in. Is is this supposed to... Let me have a talk with you there, sweetie. Sit down. Get the whole class. Class, come on. Let's all gather around. We're going to talk about... Um, uh, this girl's a little problem here. Female development. Hair is going to grow in on your bodies. Let's show everyone each other's hair. I'll be first. Ugh. Big friggin' muff. Big female gym teacher muff. She gets to just walk through the dressing room every day. Now, Cindy doesn't have hair yet. Cindy, come on up here. Let's show the girls what it looks like before you get the hair. And then Mary over there is fully developed. Look at her uh, big breasts. She's got plenty of pubic hair down there. Her hips have uh, formed beautifully. Mothering hips. Yes, mothering. If I could come, come up here and let me um, show with my hands where you'll start developing. <laughs> Miss Dyke, why do I only have buds and Susie has <laughs> full melons? Come on up here and we'll compare that, those two. Now look how her br bosom uh, moves. Uh, uh, there's weight to it. I'll lift one up here. Oh, oh. And this is a little developing bud, which uh, is very cute, but uh, not quite developed. <laughs> Ladies off at the top. Let's just see everybody's. I'll, I'll get naked, too. She's like, what are these little line stretch mark things on my bum? I don't understand what these are. Is there anything that I could apply to this area? Come on up here. I'll show you a cream I use. I'll rub it in for you. That's cold. <laughs> I'll warm it up with my body. I'll just lay on you. She's like this is a, called friction. <laughs> she's like a great white in an ocean filled with chum. Oh, just guppies. gets to walk Ooh. through the locker room yeah. every day. It's like a whale and after and class. krill and plankton. She just scoops it up. Just what a job. The best job ever. Takes it all in yeah. and takes her $14,000 a year and goes home. Oh. Oof. But she don't care. She doesn't care. Stays there till she's 16. Everybody <laughs> talks about her commitment. She yeah. Never, she never missed a day. Oh, at the award dinner and stuff. And let's bring up Ms. Johnson, who <laughs> her commitment to um, physical education is outstanding, second to none. She's been on the job 40 years here at our high school. She decided not to get married. She was so dedicated yes, to her job. Yes, so dedicated that a husband and children were just not even in her game her plan. is completely non-existent from 40 years of abuse in her office. <laughs> I, see, I see that she brought her friend, or is it a sister, Joan? We don't know. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, it she's my roomie. <laughs> we're roomies. Been roomies for 20 years. Lifelong pals. <laughs> no, but they never admit it. Like, no, it's, it's and just... Her, and her roommate that we all know because she's been around the school. Close friend. Close friend. Yeah. She was so dedicated she couldn't afford rent, so she had to get a roommate. All the applause. Okay. <laughs> Settle down, people. Yes, I do have a commitment to physical education. I've loved each and every girl that's come through my gymnasium. Let me talk about some of my favorites over the years. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> 1978. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Abigail Martin. <laughs> Have a picture of her right here. Can still picture her running. <laughs> Blossoming into womanhood. <laughs> oh, God. That is heaven on earth right there. Yeah. Mike uh, Westchester, what's up? <laughs> so, man, you guys are killing me today. I got a pretty funny story. When I was... uh. So my friend told my gym teacher was a real asshole that I could beat him in the ring. Sure enough, we line up. He's like, no, no, I can't beat him. And I beat him. You know what? Hang out the bell on Mike. I'm sorry. Yeah, and and you know what him. the weird thing is? That's the first bad phone call we've gotten in a long time. Yeah. I think the cell phones are getting a lot better. You think that's it? That's the first one, if you think about it, mm. where it was a bad sell or something. He's probably still talking, too. Uh, I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> so then the guy we says... We can call back with the story tomorrow. Let's go to Rick in Michigan. Rick? Hey, how you doing? Hey. Hey, uh, I just wanted to tell you guys, I had a high school gym teacher, picked up a prostitute, stabbed her 36 times, did life in prison. Wow. Oh, there's a story. And what was story. his favorite game during uh, gym class? I don't know. Dodgeball. He, he was a big weightlifter. He was a real big guy. Big bodybuilder. Right. 
Oh, had that, that angry uh, rage vein that's right in the middle of your forehead uh, from years of losing your shit. I didn't graduate because of gym, gym class. I, I just gave up. I was the guy that had to go twice a day. Um, normally, you had to go every other day. I had to go <laughs> just twice a day. picture him trying to climb the rope. Because I didn't care. I, and it wasn't even climbing the rope. I, and it wasn't. I, I was able to pass the physical fitness test with the pull-ups and everything. It wasn't that I couldn't do anything. I just couldn't be bothered. I hated it. I hated the whole. Uh, I have to change in the middle of the day. What I'm. Wear, I put my clothes on in the morning. That's it. I don't want to change. So I was the guy like with the jeans and the t-shirt. <laughs> Always forgot his gym stuff. You yeah, know that guy. That was guy. Oh, I brought your gym it. stuff in the big brown grocery bag that's yeah, all wrinkled up. It never got washed. It would just stayed like in the locker, and I would just say, "Oh, I left it at home." I all right, go s- take a take a fucking seat over there. Like the disgusted, he was always disgusted with me. I had one gym teacher that um, I, I came in, uh, and this wasn't even high school. This was like elementary school, and I used to. My hair went through a stage. I have pictures of it where I didn't know what the hell to do. I had straight, like light brown, if not blonde hair, up until maybe third or fourth grade, somewhere around there. And then it got darker, and I got this swooping wave in the front, and the back started curling up. Started looking like Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like Bob's big boy. I just said that because I want to see the Photoshop later. And that, yeah. <laughs> Anthony with Jimmy Neutron hair. And then a couple of years later, it was just a curly mess that I had no clue what to do with. So for quite a few years, yeah, there look, that's where it started just going a little crazy on me. Well, it's probably because you, did you start growing it? Uh, yeah, yeah. But even when I was younger, it would it look at the bags long. under your eyes. Were you already smoking weed at that age? No. <laughs> <Jesus Christ. laughs> He looks so dull. dull. I don't like how he's dressed like Greg Brady in the Johnny Bravo episode. (laughs) It was probably the bicentennial. I don't know. That was so huge. Remember that? Oh, the bicentennial was giant. Look at this. Now, look. (laughs) See? Now there's a problem. <laughs> there's all sorts of problems. So, with that hair. Oh, I know. Please. He looks like, who, who, not Valley Bertinelli. Who's that other chick on One Day at a Time? <laughs> Wait. Mackenzie, the, the, Mackenzie, Mackenzie Phillips? Phillips? Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Phil. You bring in some of your school fucking pictures. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> Allie. At least he's praying about the class. You know what it looks like? I look, I still You're knocking me down. I look like Opie. You're knocking me Not down. Not you, the real Opie. I know. That's where I got my name. And, and this gym teacher came so up to me, fun. and it was during that phase. He comes up to me, and he was like this this big, burly guy. He had his hands on his hips, and he bends over and looks down at me, and he goes, Look at the way you groom yourself, man. And I, I was like, what, what do you even mean by that? Like, I didn't know, I didn't he understand. He meant we lost the Vietnam War. I think that's what was bugging him. And what is wrong with this he was disgusted. new wave of youngsters coming up? He was disgusted by me and my hair. And he was like, look at the way you groom yourself, man. Yeah, yeah we, they, we, they, that's a Photoshop. <laughs> that's very good. I'm just as little Red Riding hey, Hood. Can, can I, uh, <laughs> Bastards. we need to interrupt because people are finally catching up to the program. Now they have their lesbian uh, gym teacher stories. Hannah, the trucker. Hannah. Hi, how are you guys? Hello. All right, what's up, Hannah? Oh, uh, not a whole lot. Um, just driving down the road right now. No, I just want to tell you guys my little my little high school story of two lesbian uh, coaches I had. Okay. Mm. Oh, I tell you, the physical was a treat. <laughs> The physical? Holy the physical. Oh. Oh, yeah. We're on to something. These gym teachers got away with murder. Oh, yeah, they did. Let me tell you, because they have you stripped down to your underwears and your bra back in them days. And back in them days, I'm pretty well developed and pretty well developed now. And, oh, they have you, like, bend over, touch your toes, and, you know, start <laughs> touching your back. And then all of a sudden, here comes the breast exam. Whoa. By the By the gym <laughs> teacher. By the gym teachers, it was something to use. Those how do they get off on the? Uh, well, you know how they get off, but how do they get away? You gotta check for scoliosis. <laughs> yeah, scoliosis. Um, I'm gonna need you to remove your panties. <laughs> Make sure that lower spine's okay. You know, the spine goes all the way to your taint. This is called. I'm uh, really gonna have to. This is called the scoliosis test. <laughs> no one got scoliosis. It involves my tongue. <laughs> yeah, we'll see the, the We're checking for the mumps. <laughs> 
basic plan was only for the girls that were really well developed because they were thinking of breast cancer. So they wanted to make sure that we knew how to check ourselves properly. What, what, are they still? No, I don't, I don't know. You know, early know. prevention. Yeah, <laughs> early prevention, girls. Come on. <laughs> Strip them off, girls. I'm going to be touching your titties today. Are, are they still grabbing guys' balls in school? Yes. Yes. They're still doing the, the, the cough thing? The old turn and cough. Checking yes. for hernia and stuff. They kind of grab under your ball sack. Yeah, because that's what an eight-year-old kid gets. And make you, yeah. yeah. I got a hernia. I was lifting a grand piano at home <laughs> right. at eight. Right. And it's like, if you're going to check for that, there's so much other shit. Wouldn't you check beforehand? Yeah. That was just an excuse for some person to put their hands on your nuts. On your nuts when you're fucking eight years old. Eight years old. Did I really need a prostate exam at eight? Yeah. My... <laughs> I, yeah, I, need, I need to be checked for this because of my part-time job. I work for a moving company. Yeah. I was not in school. I wasn't wearing my belt, the my hernia girdle. Yeah, they at have a eight. to touch. So, Hannah, how was the breast yeah, exam? Yeah, they like never it? found a hernia. No. They never. Sorry, not one That's kid. Right. Hannah, you like the breast exam? Uh, not particularly. I prefer men than I do women. Yeah. All right. Good story. We got the girls calling in now. We got Miami Beach checking in. Gina. Gina, what's up? Um, just like what you guys were saying before, this woman, first of all, was fat like anything, so I don't even know how she taught gym. Second of all, she'd take us off campus to go play tennis. So we'd literally walk like five blocks away from the school to go play tennis. Some of us would walk back from the tennis court, go through people's purses, smoke, drink, and she never even knew we weren't on the tennis court anymore. She didn't even pay attention. Couldn't get away with that shit. I no, swear, it is. Imagine no. that happening no. today. Imagine that happening today. Imagine. Imagine, Gina. Imagine that happening today. And it was an all-girls school, so this woman was in heaven, because that's all she saw all day long. And, of course, you know, it was Catholic school, so we wore short skirts. Yeah. You're imagining that. All right. Aren't you? <laughs> see what the girls do? Like the Gina. Catholic school girls do? When they um, get out of school and they're walking home, they roll the skirt at the top, at the waist, to shorten it up at the bottom, <laughs> and then take the white shirt, uh, unbutton uh, it, and tie it. So they can look so like, it's like a midriff less thing. Britney Spears. Wow, Anthony does get out of his house. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, just down into my basement. I was going to say, yeah, he knows the exact time to leave. <laughs> I know. Those kids are getting out. I'm going to go to the store. Does anybody want anything? Anthony, they why are you know... leaving the house every day at 2.50? Yeah, they know how to sexy up those Catholic girl, uh, school girl uh, uniforms. Uh, those um, things are fucking ridiculous. They know how to sexy them up, though, the girls. They know where to fold them and twist them and we tie them. We were talking them. about talking about that, like, you know, girls lose their mind, like, like Fleet Week, when all these guys come in dressed like yeah. sailors. That's like a boatload of chicks coming in dressed yeah. like French maids and all that. You'd be just walking around with a terminal heart on. Don't they understand the schools, these Catholic schools, that that look is one of the hottest looks, like Ever. like, like the sexy French maid thing, or the, it's a fetish look. It is hot. It is sexy. Look at that. Look, look, at, look at the picture Iraq just pulled up. Like, it's that. Uh, look, why are they still dressing uh, little girls like that? Oh, and I challenge any person of, of high moral standards to to not have some sort of filthy thought. You no, you look and, and it's, it's, yeah, wow, that is really hot. Of course. Would they you should be look dressed at that in -year -old. burlap gunny sacks. That's how they should be dressed. Not in this. That's uh, all right. Um, it's we got our wear. new uh, uniforms. They are from Fredericks of Hollywood. Uh, put these on, girls. <laughs> why do they go half? Why uh, they go I'm in charge of the uniforms uh, this year, girls. <laughs> <laughs> they come from a little place called Vicky's. I know it is Victoria's Secret. Uh, this could be our little secret here in gym class. <laughs> Where's the rest of it? <laughs> Where's the rest of Steve in Jersey. Yeah, how you doing, man? Hey. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, it was uh, my uh, sophomore, junior year in high school. My girlfriends, they all used to bitch and moan because the gym teacher, the female gym teacher, they all knew she was a dyke. You know, they just, I guess she threw off that vibe. And she always hung out in the locker room when the girls were getting dressed. 
So they all, like a couple of the girlfriends that, you know, that I had back then, they used to say that they used to go in the showers and hide in the showers to get undressed and dressed because this bitch used to just walk up and down, you know, the locker room looking at all the girls getting dressed, you know, done up in their uniforms. Of course, and whatnot. it's heaven for them. And that's it, ladies. Exactly. Get them off. Yeah. And there's maybe exactly. one, off. one little girl that's on to her. The rest have no clue. No. Yeah, that's what happens, yeah. And my wife, we've been together since, uh, you know, senior year, and uh, my wife... She got suspended because she wouldn't wear my wife's school. She lived a town away from me. They had to wear uh, a one-piece uniform, you know, like a jumper thing. And the gym teacher was uh, just an outright dyke. Everybody knew it in the school. The girls, everybody knew it. And she had a code where the girls had to have the uh, the bottom of the uniform, you know, like the pant legs. They had to be a, a certain length, which were the length was like short shorts. And my wife refused to do it, and she got fucking suspended because she wouldn't alter the uh, the gym uniform and make short shorts out of it. That's beautiful. She wouldn't whore fucking, it up. I whore it up. Thank blatant. You. Just blatant, man. Very good. Thank you. There's two more, and then we got to move on. Sean in South Jersey. Make it fast. Hey, uh, I had a gym teacher in high school that uh, she looked like it's Pat from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> she got called dyking out of the back of the locker room with a math teacher, right? <laughs> nice. Wow. <laughs> a math was, teacher and a gym yeah, teacher. Yeah, she was fucking every day in class. All you could think of was, yeah. look, she had the glasses, everything. Yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> let's make out. All right, let's go to Tennessee, Brian. Hey, what's going on? Hey, man. First of all, I'm glad that PayPal bit uh, mentioned it all worked out. But uh, show me what's in your pants. Oh, okay. Uh, anyways, I uh. The gym teacher should have been in jail for child abuse. If he got caught screwing around in the shower, you know, you know, running or what have you, he had a paddle, it was like an inch thick with holes in it. You got two swats, which killed you anyways. Then you had to get on your elbows and toes to tell everybody else was done. Bare naked, nothing covered. Was this Texas? Uh, actually it was. <laughs> yeah, it was oh. down in, in here, around Houston area. That is uh, gay. That is a gay man. <laughs> That's uh, um, getting than, off. Then go to the sea. Broke back mountain. Broke back one. gym class. All right. Thank yeah. you. Uh, Why do they have the holes in it? So it cuts down on the resistance oh, of yeah. the wind. So you can just yeah, more speed. Harder. More speed. More speed. Who is the sadistic son of a bitch? My mother actually used to hit us. Uh, my dad was in a fraternity, and he saved oh, the paddle. Great. So my mother used to fucking just line us up. Was that the uh, tool of uh, beating? Oh, yeah, but we deserved all of it. Plus, you know, she, you know, getting hit by, you know. My dad never hit us. My mother, was, she would just fucking wail the shit out of you, though. No, my dad would give us the strap every so often. The strap. But then my mom, when she tried to hit us, it was ridiculous. It just never worked. And it we, used, we used to hide that sad. paddle, right? And one time we hit it for like a good, like, eight months. And me and my brother went through this growth spurt. And my mother came in. She finally found the thing. And she started wailing on us, and we just started fucking laughing. That's and, when it's over. And the harder she hit us, the the more we laughed till we would just die in laughing. And then she just gave up. And as she goes to walk out, she turned around, like, with her eyes welling up, just goes, it isn't funny. And we just, it was the worst beating I ever got. It was just like, oh, God, I made my mother cry. What did that cost the whole family? Milk for a year? <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah, one for all, not for one. Fucking yeah. family. <laughs> Stood up to your mom, and now the rest of the family has to suffer. All right, no Damn. milk for the year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when mom tries to hit you after a while, and it's just not working out, it. Uh, oh yeah. You yeah. get the upper hand a little bit there. All right. The hey, beatings uh, have stopped. Just, I mean.